girls, ladies and gentlemen of all ages and sizes. Let's let's do it. First game of the night, shout casting. I'm excited for it. We actually don't have any background music. Oh me. Um, oh wait, you guys can hear it. Okay, it's silent for me, but you guys can hear it. I'm not sure why I suddenly can't hear it. Um, interesting. Let's see. <laughs> Okay, Alistar taking off the table. One of the strongest supports at the moment. He's uh, He's been pretty powerful, really, since about the group's play-in stage of Worlds to the end of the, the regular season. He just really spiked up in popularity. Brings a lot of CC to the table, some guaranteed engage, and level six coordinated tower divings. Uh, when he has that ultimate, the 75 or 65% damage reduction at level one. Definitely really good for tanking the tower for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Jump in, drop your combo, and walk to the edge of turret range and just stand there while your team demolishes them under tower. That's basically how you play Alistair with an organized team. Uh, also, Kaisa taken off the table. Incredibly strong late game carry. Can duel the advantage being with her. ADC is in such a weak spot right now because when crit spikes, that Kaisa spikes at two items and can duel just about anybody if you play well. Same thing with Vayne right now. I know you never think of Vayne as an early spiking champion, but her two item spike, while it takes a little longer since Ginsu's and Bork are so expensive, her two item spike is actually pretty powerful. Uh, Ginsu's Bork and her Silver Bolts all usually come in when she hits about a level 11 to level 13 when she's getting max levels in Silver Bolts. Um, so she's doing 12% of your maximum health in true damage every second auto attack and i don't care who you are that hurts <laughs> and i i love seeing mundo on the upper, other team he's just like i'll stack health and armor but what does Vayne not give a rip about health and armor so you're actually better off really against Vayne going or, or the on hit Vayne build just going pure squishy um because she's going to kill you at the exact same rate fun fact <laughs> fun fact <laughs> All right, so Ice picking up Lulu, probably going to be playing her in the supportive role, which means it's most likely going to be Velkush in the mid lane. Uh, he is not going to be able to play his Velkaz instead, looking at hovering the Echo, but I do also know that he's played Xerath quite a bit before as well, on and off the stream, so we'll have to see what he decides to grab for sure. I love this guy, this guy's title, Dignalos. <laughs> it's... Uh play off of the old team Tignitas because they were terrible. Anyway, sorry. Anyway, so um, we'll see what Teleporting Noodle ends up picking up. But it is Echo picking up, or Velkush picking up Echo, not on the signature Velkaz. Um, little uh, fun fact for the... Uh, holy no! They didn't! Darius is unbanned boys wait he's gonna get through again is darius? he gonna be able to pick up darius oh, okay so wait, he he's what? being nice he's being nice and i think he's what? actually no i wanted Otter to see darius <laughs> i haven't gotten to see steel stomp people on darius since he got buffed uh wait no way dignalos <gasps> dignalos i still have okay just real quick aside i still have the bowels energy drink from the case that i earned as my payment for shoutcasting the nerdicon tournament over two years ago i think it's been three years now um that's insane but dude it has been forever welcome welcome back really welcome back as it is um so yeah deceased seal not taking the darius instead taking rengar in the jungle leaving otter to play the urgot in the top lane so some new champion faces coming out of these players exciting to see but we are going to have to sigh our heads and shake a little bit of the fact that we aren't going to see the legendary darius play this game unless somebody from the side of uh lp left wants to try to pick that one up which by the way by the way um the two teams are for team one lp left and for team two Team Fade. Those are the team names in case you weren't aware, Wraith. But you still have our balls, yeah. <laughs> That's just awesome. You're the ADC for the team. Dude, we got two people from those teams. That's crazy. I love it. I love it. Welcome back. Happy to have you guys if you want to stick around to play game number two. Uh, Lucian was that third pick for the side of LP left. And we're going to get Morgana. Interesting choice, especially her Black Shield on Zed could be pretty powerful. 
Yeah. The thing is, is that Lucian got through. Lucian is the most powerful AD carry in the meta, bar none. Um, really, Lu they're, Lucian's in, like, usually go S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, D tier, well, or really S plus, S, S minus. Like, Lucian is S plus, and then S and S minus are completely blank. He's like two two categories above everybody else in the meta right now. Then there's Kaisa and Vayne are pretty good as well. Sivir's actually pretty strong, and my lord, I haven't seen Kog'Maw in a long time. Ooh. Into Lucian, that is bold, Catenator. We will see how that ends up going. If Teleporting Noodle plays this Lucian uh, correctly, he will end up very fed. Um, but if Kogma gets himself rolling, I mean, Kogma late game, but he is playing into Echo and Akali, and there's also going to be a Lulu on the opposite side. You usually be, want to be the one who has the Lulu. So we've got Dive and Kogma. Yeah, mm, this is really yeah. interesting, especially because Kogma has not been played a whole lot, and he's generally played into tanks because uh, his ability to tear through their health. But Ramus is the only solid tank on the side of LP Wait, left. Ho hold on, I have to, I have to address to heal. What are you smoking, boy? <laughs> All right, go Lucian, into that after we play. Good? After we what on earth are you talking about? And their champions. Let's go to that first. Every tier list. Hold up. Every tier right. list everywhere puts him number one. Yeah, let's. And then. On top of that, like every pro, he's banned or picked in almost all high elo games. Just because he's so powerful in the early game and games are being closed out by 30 minutes. So he can crush lane, deny CS. Um, he's really powerful at one and two items, which is really where the game is decided at this, uh, when you get into anywhere plat and above, games are decided before 20 to 25 minutes. There, you get an occasional one where it stalls out if you have a team that has really good wave clear and you can pull it, put it into. Uh... <laughs> You're hilarious, Jake. No, anyway. So, fine, fine. I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> I just want to roll through the players and their champions before we lost all the time. For this side of Team LP left, we've got Ice taking the Lulu in the support of Roll, Velkush on the Echo in the mid lane, Teleporting Noodle, it's been a while, but welcome back, taking the Lucian AD carry roll, Crescent Reflect smurfing again with the Akali in the... Oh, wait. Wait! Ladies and gentlemen, hold the phone. It's Akali mid lane. I'm calling Echo top lane. I'm going to guess that. I'm not positive, but that's what I'm going to guess. As Broken Hearts is going to take the Ramus in the jungle. Give it over for Team Fate. All right, so for Team Fade, we've got Excellency Zeno on Zed in the mid lane. We've got Excellency Otter on Urgot in the top lane. We've got Deceased Seal on Rengar in the jungle. We've got Excellency Dive Fanboy now. Is that a smurf? We'll never know. Uh, <laughs> on Morgana in the bottom lane supportive role. And Catenator rounding it out with Kog'Maw in the bottom lane ADC role. Not running Flash. Ooh. This man likes to live dangerously. Wait. He's got barrier what? and heal on the most immobile ADC in the game against Wait, Illusion. What? This man, this man, is laying down. It's just a challenge. He's like, you can't touch me, man. You can't. This, I'm too good. This... We'll see. We'll see if he can do it. If the positioning is on point, but bro, you you ha you are so bold against the Kali Echo and a Ramus and Lucian it's and a, Ramus. A single taunt, a single whimsy, a single Akali. Look, notice I didn't give any skill. Literally just Akali yeah, just, just herself. Akali appears and you die. That's what happens now. And Kogma isn't running flash. This is fascinating. I know that Catenator's an ADC main. Okay, he's won twice taking non-jungle AD carries like Caitlyn into the jungle. His team has won. All right, this guy knows what he's doing on AD carries, but this is something that's just crazy, and I'm actually super, super psyched to watch it, how it unfolds. I really want to see it. On another quick side note, I want to say very quickly that yesterday I was doing some graphical updates to the stream, okay? Um, very short story. And a friend of mine who's over, we're hanging out, and I decide to spectate a game. As I'm spectating the game, 
It turns out to be it was just a random guy. This one guy who's played on the stream like one time, Caden, who friended me, and I decided to spectate his game for complicated reasons. And this game turned out to be so crazy. I really wish I'd been shoutcasting it. It's the first time in an age that I've actually seen a Jinx steal Baron with an ultimate from base. Killed the enemy team Zed, stole the Baron, and the team won the fight off of it. The game was nuts. Wow. There were so many crazy things that were going on. It That is a piece of the pie that made up that game. So my friend and I are sitting here trying to just that chat. That like a good slice just, of pie. We're just hanging out. And it was like every five minutes, our conversation had to stop because we're watching this game unfold in front of us. And we're just like, whoa, what just happened there? And then we rewind it. We watch it again. And we're like, oh, that's so crazy. And then repeat that every five minutes. It was, it was really good. So, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah. one of those times that other people are playing games and I wish that I could shoutcast them wasn't to be, wasn't to be this time, but I was hoping for some exciting games tonight as well. Uh, I know that we've got a lot of amazing players in this game. Catinator, Seal, Otter, Zeno, Velkush. I'm going to leave Ice in his own category. Uh, Crescent Reflect. <laughs> All these guys have done crazy work before. And I'm really interested in seeing Ice take the Lulu because he mostly plays mid lane. And I don't know that we've seen his Lulu before. I'm trying to remember who else he's we played in the supportive role. Yeah. Hmm. Lulu, a very powerful supportive champion, can really just deny engage or really start engage using the slow. Plus, she also has a good shielding for trading and bonus damage from picks. So, and she can poke by herself anyways, depends on what you want to max. If you want to go continuous all in, you can max E, you want to go, you want to go continuous poke, max Q, um, or if you want to troll, you max Whimsy. Um, max troll. All right, and we are in game, boys. You see, the thing is, we're, this is like the first time we've gotten to actually shout cast in like two and a half weeks. Oh yeah, it's been a while. And honestly, I was able to shout cast last Thursday, but it didn't feel right without Wraith. So we are back, the duo, the dream duo, Tuesday nights, we're on fire. The other thing is that not only did we have the two weeks of Spectre being broken, but the week before that, I had family in town. So even when I could shout cast, I couldn't do it much. There's no one home! I can literally get as hype as I want, and it's gonna be awesome! I don't have to worry about waking anyone. It's going to be a super good night. So, welcome. I'm gonna, te I'm gonna tell Laura that you're so happy that she's gone. No, I'm not <laughs> happy that she's gone! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's no. going to bed alone is after getting married is the loneliest thing in the world. But but not have to worrying about waking her up. See, see, it's the positive side of things. I normally, when she's home, cast quietly because I'm concerned about her and I don't want to wake her up. But I don't have to worry about that anymore, which is awesome. <laughs> Milo Gamers, first of all, welcome. Obviously, you're a friend of Wraith, Ryan. Teach me your ways, and how's your evening job going? That's a good question. That is the good question. Very so. well. Right now, we are in-game, and this is going... I mean, for the last... Oh, yeah, guys. So, for the last two weeks, in case you were wondering how the spectator error ended up happening, and we didn't get to cast, it was the week. It, this all started going downhill, and I was like, you know how everybody gives Riot Games crap for being a really, dis like, really bad company? Really, they're not all that bad. They make a quality product, and people just complain about it. I kid you not. Five minutes after I said that, Spectator went down, and we bugged out of the game. And then the second game bugged out, too. And then for the last two weeks since then, we haven't actually been able to shoutcast the right games. Like, I was trying so hard to be positive. I'm like, you know, it's a pretty good game. I like it. It's one of the best in the world right now. And then Riot's like, don't support us. We don't want your approval. Anyway, so <laughs> right. Broken Heart's going for the trade onto Deceased Seal right here. They're fighting over the Scuttle Crab, but Deceased Seal is going to pick it up. The W is down from Broken Hearts, and it's going to look like he's just going to have to run away. He does not have access. He's going to flash away, Rengar's but the jump coming out. 
Yep, all he needs is that extra bit of range from the brush. I like that he used it to grab the Scuttle Crab as well. So not only does he get first blood, but Morgana's gonna find an assist as well for the side of Team Fade, looking pretty good. Lucian going in for a trade, slowed down with the Kog'Maw though, as Rengar comes to the bottom lane. Lucian, what are you doing? He tries to dash away using the Relentless Pursuit. The shield from uh, Lulu's gonna keep it alive for the moment, but it's still the Morgana Dark Binding that's gonna guarantee the kill. And Catinator, the ADC with no flash, starts off with his own kill in the game yeah the cc'll making a big impact on the game that this this thing all started with that fight around scuttle crab ram is taking an unwise fight against a very strong early game jungler um lots of power on that early game rengar uh especially when he's around the brush so then he was using that brush to his advantage as we said picked up the scuttle crab got an xp advantage and then proceeded to chase down the ramus who did not have access to powerball at the time so getting that first kill and then realizing there's no jungler on the map no chance of a counter gank comes bot with the wraparound gank and kills teleporting noodle to give a kill over to the scaling 80 carry catinator doing a good job in leveraging his lead right now has a whole level advantage over that and now nah, died not able to hit Wait, that hold here on here goes ramus for another gank attempt in the mid lane onto the zed who just shouted out to the side <laughs> not too worried about that i did want to comment very quickly that morgana crazy crazy strong crazy good impact if she can land the dark bindings but especially early on when you get and a feel entirely useless if you can in the laning phase that's yeah that's a really good thing is that it's not really hard to do it's kind of like a blitzcrank hook you see it coming all you have to do is take a side step to the left or to the right you'll be okay so the early game impact of dive fanboy isn't going to be too much but i feel that when it gets to the later portion of the game if you don't have your wards down oh, correctly that's the that's stealth down get worried Seal did try to dash in, but I think Akali's going to be making it out through the brush on the bottom side of the river, so it was yeah. able to survive, but we'll probably have to recall it. She's sitting pretty low, and wait, oh. Delicious Seal's still trying to chase in. He might be in range for the jump. No, not quite. Uh, Crescent Reflect read it after yeah. dropping a ward, so that's a good double defensive. Not only did Akali decide to actually leave rather than just continue to recall in the jungle, but dropped a ward as well. It's so good when you're recalling just to drop that ward wherever. Sometimes it doesn't even matter. Drop it in the middle of the lane. Get that ward down. It's going to grant you a tiny bit more vision. And when you go back to the base, you're just going to pick up another free one anyway. So, well, when you're support, yeah. you pick up free ones. But <laughs> Yeah, also, uh, your trinket does not cancel your backing animation. Uh, hold on. Does he seal at it again? Picking up a kill for himself. Uh, caught out by the uh, the Dark Binding, Dive Fanboy. Uh, there was a ward being contested right there. Dive Fanboy walks up, tosses out the Dark Binding, lands the snare, and he steals around, picks up the kill for himself. So this Rengar is getting snowballed really quick. He's got three stacks on his passive right now, and he only needs five. So he'll probably end up coming top lane in just a second, uh, try and pick up a stack onto Felkush. And uh, wait, Ramus is posturing around the top side, but I don't think they want this. A dive is, or Otter is six versus Velkush is five, and Broken Heart's four. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a double kill right there. Yep. Oh, the ultimate wants to come through, taking away, trying to get Velkush low enough. He pops the heal for a moment. I think he's actually escaped. What? Velkush walks away, times it out with the help of that potion. And here comes Ramus to the top side to get a little bit of damage. Broken Hearts has the taunt. He's got the minions as well. Otter maybe going down. The camera switch back to the bottom side. His cat there takes a huge amount of damage from the turret. Chris is reflected on the bottom. Does he away? The least seal. Can he chase this one down? Walks back into the bush for the Akali. He's got the outplay. Crescent Reflect gets the kill. And now Zeno finds himself in a bit of trouble. Throws out the shurikens, trying to find another kill onto the Akali. But he's taunted up by Ramus once again. Flashes forward, but the flash away. Akali lives. Doesn't even need the blast cone ultimate from the Zed to get a ton of damage down to Ramus, bursts him out and on the bottom side, it's constant action because Katnir's gonna go down to the turret, but it's an execution! No one did any damage to him, and now the Lulu shield, actually the Lulu, or Lucian lives, Lulu and Lucian, Lulu, Lulu, Lulu. as <laughs> the mid lane, Lulu. Zito picked up a second kill, finish off Akali, because for some reason Crescent Reflect decided to go back in. Well, Zeno had already used, or he thought Zeno had already used his W shadow since he saw one on the ground, but that was actually the shadow out of his ultimate. That one drops one right behind your opponent. Um, 
So that was just a miscalculation by Crescent Reflect right there. Trying to go in, pick up a cheeky kill using his ultimate, but doesn't manage to get it. Um, he was hoping for the heal off of the uh, Q. Once again, does not find it. Velkush trying to trade forward onto Otter, but he is down 30 CS. Otter right now doubling Velkush's CS. And for a champion that really falls off into the later stages of the game, Echo being this far behind in the early game is really not a good thing. Welcome, so, Commander C, really quickly. Just wanted to say welcome and thank you for joining as Nerzillion is also out of his game, so he will be joining us for game number two. Very excited about that. But back to the game. Yeah, one kill to five. Team Fade starting off really strong 2,000 gold lead. And this is kind of what we were talking about in the um, pre-picks and bans, the lobby, when we're saying these teams look a little bit unfair. But you know what? Maybe Crescent Reflect on the Sakali hasn't quite popped off yet. There's still a little bit of time for her to get that gun blade and get back into the game. Yeah, and Catinator in the bot lane has 50 CS to Lucian's 32. And Lucian has a Caulfield's Warhammer. Okay, I am very confused. No, right. Why do you, okay, you can see Steel jumping out, has level 6, they're going to force the Power Ball out of the Ramus, but he is going to get away to see Steel not able to jump in front of that. Yeah, the CC will also seen by a control ward, so Rengar is going to clean that one up. As Crescent Reflect gets some nice bursts on the Xeno, drops him about half. We'll dash straight to the Rengar, go into the Shroud, try and do a little bit of damage. Going on the aggressive 1v2, Ramus isn't even there to try to defend, as the Kogma ultimate will stop the Lulu from recalling on the bottom side. Crescent Reflect going right back in, once again, dropped low though, just, should be popped! He just and kills himself. And Rengar is the one who actually picks up the kill, so he's even a part of it as well, Zed. A little grumpy that his jungler got it, but you know what? Having 3-1 on your Rengar is not too bad, as in the bottom lane teleporting. Noodle going to be jumped on underneath the turret, trying to make the outplay of his life. Gets the heal, keeps himself alive for the moment. Catnir is back again, once underneath the turret. The laser's not going to come through. The turret shot's not going to do it. The heal won't do it. And that is Catinator giving a shutdown to the side of teleporting Noodle. Just saying you live if you have flash. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness. Just saying. Just saying. So the heal and barrier Kogma goes down. This is why every game, it's Flash D or Flash F. Press F for respects, boys. Press F for respects. Either way, two kills to eight. Two precious, tiny kills. And Lucian was able to squeak out one with the hair on his chinny chin chin with the help of that turret on the bottom side after dying. <laughs> But even though Lucian gets that kill for himself, it's still a disadvantageous situation. Oh, As yeah. you can see, that wave was shoving to him, and it was pretty well stacked. Right, in the so top that lane, we got a gank by lost. Broken Hearts. Got the taunt down. Otter in trouble. He will be dropped. No chance to ult. No chance to get back to the turret. No chance to flash, because it's on cooldown. He actually does have flash, guys. It just happened to be on cooldown at, at that point in time. But third kill mm -hmm. to the side of LP left, which they desperately need, or else otherwise they will be losing some LP. Not really. These are uh, custom draft games, so not, not too big a deal. As Crescent Chris Reflect inting. Yeah. Uh, wait, no, he might actually be able to turn this around. Does he have R? No, it doesn't look like he does. He actually uh, just almost just killed himself under turret, though. I'm not sure. It actually, his ultimate just went on cooldown there, so I'm not positive how that. I think he might have used it and immediately backed away. Or it's a spectator yeah. glitch. More spectator issues. Anyway, yeah, three kills, hey, we're 18. we're actually shout casting. I'm just I know. About. I can't complain. I will not complain because we're casting. Catinator's playing AP Kogma. Oh, is that why things are a little bit different? Wait, Dark Binding is going to land onto the Lulu. Whoa! Catinator with the first damage. A beautiful living artillery straight into an auto attack. No Burst flash. Out. Here Kogma. comes the Ramus. We'll see He's if Tom goes down. He's the so magic dead. spell shield not going to save him. He's going to be burned out. And immediately the Akali follows through to finish off the Morgana for a double kill. And that's Crescent Reflect now. Three kills to her name. Maybe able to start getting back into this game. What did I say, though? Just, Almost finishing the Gunblade? It's a revolver at the moment. Just, just saying, you don't live there if you have Flash. You just die. <laughs> <laughs> Even you with flash, you're not you're not escaping yeah. the Ramus. Uh you know you know what makes you live there? Wards. Broken Heart's gonna get caught up by Xeno real really quick here, and yeah, he is oh. gonna get bursted down. Powerball broken out. Wait! And... Wait! The Lulu Shield! Wait! Xeno flies ah! here! Wait! Broken Heart sidesteps the Shurikens! Xeno doesn't get the kill! No. 
he doesn't even sidestep. Zeno just straight up missed. Oh my Zeno. goodness. Five kills Buddy. to nine, and the Ramus survives. Velka uses the broken stop watch in the top lane to keep himself alive. Otter underneath the turret, gonna take Otter's a huge chunk himself. of damage. He's trying to use the ultimate, but it's too late. Velka ults to save his life, and Otter is able to walk away as well. But there's a Rengar around the corner. Wait. CCL comes in, hops, quick attack, and that's going to be the end of the Echo. So. Despite Otter's best efforts, he's only going to get an assist off of that one. Yeah, I'm wondering why Velkush just didn't go straight for the all-in on Otter right there when he was almost killing himself under turret. If he does that, pops the ultimate to ignore uh, Otter's ultimate, I mean, he wins that fight and gets the kill and then probably survives Delicious. Well, no, probably not. Um, yeah, but this AP Kog'Maw in the bottom side, it seems to be working out fairly well. Um, I still don't like AP Cog very much. It doesn't do do enough consistent damage if you can't land the ultimates. Okay, there's been pretty decent so far. Teleporting Noodle gonna take a huge chunk of damage, and that's the Living Artillery coming through. One more shot's gonna do it, but the wild growth from the Looter comes through. So Teleporter Noodle lives for now as Ramus is gonna powerball his way and switches targets to taunt the Morgana, get a little bit of damage down. The shield keeping him nice and healthy as well. So. Ram is able to just to push these bottom laners of Team Fade off of the turret. The teleporting noodle still in a bad place, down about 40 farm. He's gonna take a chunk of damage, forced to flash as well. Flash has been used. Not gonna do much to help him as Fan Boy gets a nice. Oh, wait, what? All right, Lucian's gone. The cat lands the living artillery. That's enough. It's a party in the bottom lane. As Zed's going to come through as well. Take several turret shots. He's going to fall. Give Ramus one kill over to see Seal chasing a little underneath the turret. I don't think he's actually going to be able to escape. He is able to get Crescent into the push just in time. Crescent Reflect later. looking for a triple kill. Able to get one onto the cog. Maz is ult out of it. Oh. But no, the see Seal with a huge burst of damage on the Rengar finishes off the Akali. And that's now doubling the side of LP. Left kills, seven kills to 14, 6,000 gold lead. It's starting to get a little bit out of hand, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you have Dark Harvest Rengar with six kills. I mean, these, the CD Seal definitely taking over this game. That are all, Basically, this all started the downhill spiral with, with that Scuttle Crab fight and then the bottom lane gank that happened after that. Pretty much destroyed any hope that Lucian had of pressuring Catinator on this very squishy immobile ADC. Uh, Velkush going for an all-in, but he doesn't have the mana for ultimate. Had Otter just gone for the all-in right there, he would have killed him. Um, but regardless, that's just going to force the Echo back. Um, probably going to be first tower gold, or second tower gold, rather. Um, over to Otter right here. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's anybody in position to contest this. The Ramus would probably just straight up die if he came into lane. Um, right now it's a tail. Can Crescent Reflect carry his team in face of all odds? Oh. And the answer is no, because oh. he's about to get killed. Trying to Goodbye. dodge through. Yeah, the Shroud not going to last for forever, so he will go down. Otter going to find Broken Hearts as well. Ramus carry, maybe. That's a pretty good chunk of damage. Otter doesn't have Flash as well, and Ramus can still use the Power Ball to catch right back up. Broken Heart solos the Urgot. What? But keep in mind, against that Urgot, though, Echo, 76 farm to the 137 on the Urgot. It's going to be pretty painful as Echo's going to try to go and get Zeno, who dashes off, but it's not going to be enough. The Grump goes through and finishes off the Ramus. So Zed still gets his third kill of the game, but not going to be too much at this point as is yeah. three kills to the four kills that Akali has. And that's all that matters is who has the most kills in the game. It's KDA, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. I mean, that KDA, is but, not yeah. true. But <laughs> uh, the thing being, right now, if you're on blue team, what you have to do is set up wards in your jungle. I mean, look at the ward line. They're all of the red vision, and there's no blue vision on the map right now. Rengar is literally sitting at the second tier tower, and they have no clue. Um, they need to go through the jungle as four and just drop wards and then look for picks. They have a strong Akali Wait. who's about to get one shot by Rengar. Right they engage here. right now. This could be really bad because, as you said, Rengar's around the corner. Broken Heart says back away. Akali might be going down to see Seal. Oh! Go oh! Crescent Reflect with a beautiful shroud out play. However, cut out by Morgana and walks right back into Living Artillery. Broken Hearts wants to make the big play of the game. Flashing forward, looking for Catinator, but the Blast Cone saves the Kog'Maw for now. 
Yeah, that's two kills over, and Akali does get that massive shutdown gold on the Rengar. Crazy outplay right there. Zeno waiting to find somebody, but not going to find anybody right there. Probably going to come in and try and kill Teleporting Noodle here in just a second. Uh, but with the Whimsy and the Wild Growth up, he's probably not going to find any success in that. Um, so, Otter going to get ganked once again. Velkush moving forward. The that is going to be the ghost pop, and can he get away? Oh, he gets out of the turret range, broken hearts for now, and I don't think Look the Ramesses will spider legs. be able to chase that one. And so Urgot is able to escape back to the turret, and that's a mid lane first tier turret going to follow as well, which is the fourth turret of the game for Team Fade, and hasn't been answered not even once. Yeah, I'm liking the way that they're playing this out. Catinator playing right at turret. When you're playing a poke champion like this, hold on a second, Crescent Reflex probably going to kill him. Yeah, we'll see if he can dodge around the Morgana. That's the target at the moment. Whoa, Lucian dropped by another living artillery. As this end gets the perfect blast cone to live for now. He is at a sliver of health. Velkush flashing forward, trying to get the last touch of damage, is able to do it. Ramus coming in as well. Now finds the taunt onto the Urgot, but the Gatling gun are going to burn down Velkush. Wait, Crescent Very Reflex. low. Echo ulting back on top of himself, but he's going to only find death. Crescent Reflex to the back line. Finishes off Morgana. Kog'Maw gets the trade of kills, though it's still three up for Team Fade again. Against the one, the only, the Ramus Broken Hearts. Gonna have to defend the second tier turret on the top side. Might be able to do so as only one wave really yeah. is crashing. Yeah, um, and that's Crescent Reflect in chat saying that he's retarded uh, because he had the perfect flank. He walked past Catinator and Morgana at under half health. He just ults them both and autos. He kills two people, but instead he walks past them for about half a second, then walks back and it was like, wait, I can kill these guys. Manages to kill the Morgana, but doesn't get the uh, stealth off in time to get the execute down onto the Kog'Maw, so unfortunately he could have turned that fight had he been a little more aware of the surroundings. And this right here, noodle. this, like, Remus now, almost tele or recalling on a control ward in the jungle, that is not what you want to see from a team that has so little vision control over their own jungle, a control Brrr. ward can sit there for forever. To see Seal wanting to hop over the wall, he's just find scaring people though. right now. Just, I already took the dragon, but I'm going to scare you away anyway. <laughs> and who is he gonna kill no no okay his ult wears off so he's just gonna sit there might actually just try and sit in the jungle and wait for somebody to walk by it could be the akali right here there is no vision on the rangar at the moment so ice might be the one to fall right here yeah oh, Zeno goes back in Crescent Akal Reflect. akali has been flanked Rengar and Morgana both Has coming no in from the stealth. top side. Can Akali escape this one? That's the question. Shroud has already been used. Going to get slowed down. Hop away from the Rengar for the moment as the Ramus is Don't coming speeding in. We'll see what can be done. Nice. Akali actually walks out of range as well. Ramus is still here, but the Dark Binding comes down. She's inside the Shroud. She can't be killed. Dive Fanboy uses the Zonia to stay alive for the moment. Will still be dropped. And Crescent Reflex survives. That is so crucial for the side of LP left. Very good awareness right there. Velkush going straight in on Otter, but doesn't have the damage to take him down. Very tanky right there. But the ta taunt's going to come through onto Broken Hearts, and but the Time Winder's going to miss. This could be a 2v1 outplay. Velkush still has access to the ultimate. He can come back, but if he mistimes this, he will get executed. Otter still has the ult up and could throw it forward. The Sea Seal coming in from the side. Velkush probably going to be the target right here. Powerball going to try and cancel it, but he's just going to wait it out. Does manage to cancel it. Velkush ults back, but does going to get the kill. Ooh. No, Otter manages to outplay it. Walking back, dodging Time Wider. He's going to continue back, but the uh, taunt is not oh. available right yet. Sea Seal coming in, and he's going to get taunted oh up, but the kill is going to come through anyway. Oh, <gasps> so close. Take a deep breath, because after all that action, you got to have a moment of cooldown as Catanir is going to be taken out. The next or inhibitor turret. Teleporting Noodle can't do anything to defend. Zed comes in as well. I don't even think the Wild Growth is going to be enough to keep him alive. No, it is not. Xeno going to take a couple of turret shots for his trouble as Catinator now turns on to the middle inhibitor. And Team Fade, despite having botched a couple of plays, is still strongly in control of this game. Hold 10 on. kills up Crescent and reflect. 12, in from the gold. He could kill Catinator right here if he wants to go for it. 
but he doesn't doesn't have vision on everybody else very wisely backing off even though if he goes in right here he probably gets two kills uh, but he doesn't know where the other members are is respecting the fact that they could kill him <clears throat> yeah anyway all right, now the taunt comes down onto Brangar into the bottom side to see Seal forced to run away. Broken Hearts wanted to take chase, so the Dark Binding from Morgana comes through. Dive fanboy, gonna slow that Ramus down. He's just gonna powerball himself to safety, thinking twice about going into enemy jungle with zero vision. So yeah, it has been just a game of ganks and a game of huge plays by this Rengar, which again, it's Seal. You, sh need, you should just get to a point where you expect it out of this guy. Zed decided to go in onto Crescent Reflex, taking out the main powerhouse, the main target. Akali falls through the Shadow Dash, takes him out. That's one of the big players for the side of Team Faye that's gone down. But Crescent Reflex forced to head back to the mid lane to try to stop those super minions from getting in. Catinator, you're gonna walk forward, try and land those on those uh, living artillery onto him, and he's not going to land the final one. Crescent Reflex is gonna get himself out of there with an incredible outplay onto the Zed right there, really showing his proficiency on this champion and definitely has the potential. I mean, we've seen it in the LCS, Bjergsen 1v9 on the Akali. We'll see if uh, if Crescent Reflect can make it happen on the same champion. He does have access to eight kills, a substantial amount of gold to see Seal once again killing another ADC. I love playing ADC against Fed Rengar. It's the most fun thing in the game. It's like, it's gray screen simulator. You walk out, it's like, I'm gonna go get some vision, and I'm dead. Here. Awesome. Uh... And then you go, oh, that's 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 death. That's death right yeah. there. Yeah. You, you hear growl, and then you just go, <sighs> Oh my gosh. <sighs> Velkush losing three quarters of his health to an E, an ultimate from Catenator. That is yeah. absolutely insane. Not often that you see the power of an AP Kog'Maw. And even still, you can actually start to get a bit more of a feel for why he the is all playing. all incoming through, but the CC seal is on the side. No, Crescent Reflect can't go in on this, especially with Rangar around the corner. He's hiding in the shroud as long as possible, trying to wait it out, wait for those cooldowns. Goes in onto Rangar, poking a little bit of damage. The Ramus flies in, trying to make a play. Ooh, nice dodge onto the red. Oh, wait, Akali gets the red buff as well, but she's pulled in by the Chains of Murka. She's gone down. The fear onto three. Otter, big play. And that's going to distract line. this team long enough that the top side inhibitor is going to fall. Velkush is able to pick up the Aragon, but to see Seal is taken out the back line. Finishes off the ADC, finishes off the support, and now is going for the Ramus as well. Will the Ramus go down? No, he will. Wait, hold on. He would, oh, jumps back into his own demise, but again, still just delaying, giving time for Catenator to completely eliminate the side of LP left's base, and they really don't have much left as these super minions are going to start taking out the Nexus turrets as the third inhibitor is going to fall. Deceased feels like, you can't kill me, I'm going to kill myself! <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what you do on a Rammus. Like, you, you, you don't kill the Rammus, you kill yourself by hitting the Rammus. Yes. Stop hitting yourself. The Rammus makes you attack him. And then sometimes you keep attacking him, even though you probably shouldn't. Hold on, Crescent Reflect going for the last minute outplay right here. He uses the stopwatch of the Zanyas, really, but maybe chunked out. Urga does have the ultimate ticking away. Wild Growth keeps her alive for the moment, but she still can't escape. Will be dropping to the Kog'Maw, who's got the double buffs as well. Full resets on the ultimate. Actually, Echo takes him out on the back line. The Lucia picks up his own kill. The Nexus is in trouble. Someone clear those minions as they're going to be continuing to beat them up. Ramus chasing the Urgot out of the base. Morgana trying to get in position for a couple more autos to try to help knock that Nexus down. The Urgot Ramus 1v1. This is the hype. This is what you come to the channel for. And Ramus decides to run away. All right. Well, I, I tried. I tried to hype it up, guys. I really did. Yeah. Uh, Powerball looks really stupid when, when he's snared in Dark Binding. He's and... Sanix. Auto. Auto. All right, Nexus. If you gotta die to minions. Yeah, all inhibitors down. Nexus, very quick to follow. May as well make a last attempt play. Ram is just absorbing as much damage as he can, keeping Otter and Morgana from chasing in. But the super minions are doing all of the work. They're slowly being cleared, and Infernal Drake picked up for the side of Team Fade as well. The Nexus is still alive. LP left, barely hanging on. And they get one inhibitor back in the game. Yeah, that's going to stop one stream of minions. And it's not going to be double supers anymore. 
Uh, but with a brief reprieve from the pressure, um, Red Team could have just ended right there if they wanted to. Uh, they could have just walked forward, auto the Nexus a couple of times. So they're trying to go for the disrespect, uh, letting the minions kill it. And hold on, Velkush going in. Uh, Zeno going to burn the ultimate beforehand, but while Velkush still has his, that's going to be absolutely no damage coming through from Zeno's ultimate. He has a lot less kill threat. Yeah, not Andesia much Seals left to say at this somebody. point as Crescent Reflect going to do what he can to distract the back line inside the Shroud, though. Still going to drop too much AoE damage. The least seal, the, the, the deceased seal, blah, 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 is going to be going seal. down. Echo going to pick up Kog'Maw once again, but Urgot decided this time, finally time to end the game. Shotgun kneecaps, drops the Nexus, and Team Fade, with a slow fade, close out the game for game number one. Yeah, that like was that. Uh, a brutal stomp. Hold on, I'm looking for the calls of teams unbalanced. Why you guys suck. Hold on, where is it? Uh, oh, <laughs> cough, cough, unbalanced, cough. <laughs> They're the ones anyway. who elected for it. Cannot complain. Cannot complain. Rengar, Darius, Zed, Yorick. Wait, what? There's only Rengar in that game. I guess Zed was in the game, but Yorick and Darius most definitely were not. And Darius wasn't even banned, so he could play Darius against you. Let's go through the MVPs and honorable mentions. All right, MVPs and honorable mentions for Team LP left. I'm going to give the honorable mention over to Broken Hearts, who got a lot of work done for his team in spite of the fact that he was a Ramus and couldn't really... He His job was to start stuff. He did manage to pick up some solo kills by himself and, uh, and some duo kills alongside Crescent Reflect, who is going to be the MVP for this particular uh, game. Shout out to Velkush at the very end for a really clean series that, like... He went in, killed somebody who I didn't see off screen, then flashed over to the other side and killed uh, killed Kogma, who doesn't have flash, so he died really easily for the assassin, and then ulted back to the other side to kill Deceased Seal. So it was just this really clean interaction on, on three sides of the Nexus that was pretty fun to watch. Not that it mattered, but that's still going to get him a shout out. Uh, but Crescent Reflect going to be the MVP. A couple of sick outplays onto Zeno, onto Deceased Seal. He outplayed just about everybody on the map at one point or another. Unfortunately, he didn't have enough damage or tankiness or team members to uh, to absorb the insane burst coming through from Zeno, from Deceased Seal. And I would say Catinator, but Cat have a lot of damage coming through or at least not burst damage um but speaking of which we're gonna move over to team fade uh mvp's honorable mention okay hmm. yeah i think i'm gonna give the honorable mention to catinator and the mvp to deceased seal uh definitely deceased seal earning it uh, he's the reason this, the uh, thing started snowballing. That Scuttle Crab fight contested by Broken Hearts probably shouldn't have been considering Arengard definitely has priority in that matchup. Um, gets himself first blood and then gets a kill over to his AD carry. Catinator gets honorable mention because he understood very well how to play the champion. Um, throwing out the ultimates and the E's underneath the turret. Uh, when you're a poke champion, putting your enemy under the turret is the best thing that you can do because poking them from the middle of the lane is really hard. They have a lot of space to dodge, and they have really no reason to step up. If they're under turret, they're on a clock to get that CS, um, so you, and you know exactly where they're going to be. That minion's going to die in two autos from the turret, so I'm going to throw my spell here because that's where they have to stand to get that minion. And it basically gives you guaranteed harass. It's exactly what Catinator did, and in, despite being in a bad matchup, without Flash, still manages to get himself the honorable mention on that champion. Even though he played an ADC with AP, I'm not even salty about that. And I'm glad that well you played. pointed that out, though. That, that, that's because you started to talk about it, and then we got interrupted by constant nonstop bloody action um, was why it's important to play up. And you could see, if you go back and rewatch the VOD, um, how many times the living artillery was able to land between the turret and the wall. 
because so many people, especially the Lulu, kept trying to walk right between the wall and the turret. That feels like a safe place. Trust me, I've done it a thousand times myself. It feels like a safe place to walk because you're kind of next to the turret and you've got that secure wall to the side and you're like, okay, I know that I'm here. But you're pinching yourself between a tunnel and that arcane living artillery is a really big AoE hit. It's actually surprising how much area that it can cover, and it can cover between the turret and the wall. So anywhere between there that you're standing, you're going to be hit by it. And the Kog'Maw landed that a bunch of times. So, wait, what? I have four, including me. Okay, four, including. But on that, I think that is perfect. All right, guys, we're going to take a very short break. We will be right back though, um, and for game number two. So don't go anywhere. Uh, we'll be right back. Actually, it shouldn't take me very long at all because I've got everyone already lined up. So give me just a second. We'll be back. <laughs> 